Hello and welcome to Daily Devotion here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Vicar Jacob Garrison. Our reading for today comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 17 through 26. And this is the Gospel reading for the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said of those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This portion here that we get from Matthew's Gospel is a part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Right before this, he just got done talking about the Beatitudes. Blessed are the meek, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed, blessed, blessed are all these different people, especially those who are persecuted for the sake of Jesus' name, and they are blessed because even though in this life they do not look strong and mighty, in the life to come they will be given much. So it is now that Jesus turns to the law and the prophets to help us understand how it is that someone really becomes blessed. What it means to really be living in the life that God has given to you. The blessings come from God, and now also the law comes from God. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, his goal is to simply let us know what life in the kingdom of heaven, as he says here, will look like. He wants us to understand that if you're going to become a Christian, this is what you should expect to see within the community of Christians. And now, even before any of this applies to any individual believer within the Christian community, even before the law and the prophets are for us, even before they're even for the Pharisees and the scribes, Jesus, Jesus himself comes not to abolish all these things, nor simply to lay them upon us, but instead so that he may fulfill all of it in and of himself. When you read through the Sermon on the Mount, you might think to yourself, this is a lot. Who can ever do all of this? And the point isn't that you're going to be able to do all of it at some point in time in your life. You're going to have everything laid out just perfectly. No, but it should be something that you delight in learning how to live within. For it is Jesus Christ who has fulfilled the law and the prophets. It's Jesus Christ whose righteousness goes beyond that of the scribes and the Pharisees and is able to hold to all the tenets, all the precepts, all the commandments of God. The law will never pass away. It is one with God's essence. And we, therefore, need to delight in the law of God, but our feeble flesh is persecuted and crushed by the law. For when we look at ourselves in comparison unto it, we are nothing. We deserve nothing. Our righteousness does not exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, and so we ought not enter the kingdom of heaven. 
But now, dear Christian, that you have been welcomed into the kingdom of heaven nonetheless because of the merit of Jesus Christ, because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which he has so freely given to you, which he, when his blood was being shed from the side of his body, his righteousness itself was being poured out upon all people, that regardless of how well they had kept the fifth commandment or hadn't kept the fifth commandment, as Jesus says here, whether they had hated their brother every day of their life, whether they had said, you, you fool, to those around them every single day, nonetheless, Jesus' blood gives us this righteousness. And now, in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, the law, these precepts here, are our joy, our delight. And this is what life as a Christian now looks like on account of what Jesus has done for you. He gives you his righteousness, welcomes you into his life so that you may have life everlasting. And now from that flows these good works of keeping the law. Jesus, yes, gave you his righteousness. He also gives you then the ability through the Holy Spirit to keep all that he has prescribed for us here. So, dear Christians, take heart and return to Jesus and seek to do all that he has told us that the Christian community will look like in the Sermon on the Mount. And he will provide for you all that you need so that you can walk according to the life that he has given you. So how do we get into the kingdom of heaven even though our righteousness is not greater than the scribes and the Pharisees? It is on account of Jesus whose righteousness is greater. And now in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, we continue to live righteously and keep some of these things because we delight in the life of Jesus. In his precious name, amen. <laughs>